I have no plaque bacteria. I have no plaque. My teeth are covered with healthy biofilm. I do not believe there is any advantage in a dental cleaning. I'm Dr. Ellie and I am here to help you have the healthiest mouth ever and avoid unnecessary dental treatments. Meet Dr. Ellie Phillips, a dentist of the UK and a global oral health educator with over 50 years experience. Countless testimonies currently circulate social media confirming the authenticity of her teachings. In this video, she will teach us how you can clean out plaque and tartar permanently and heal all tooth cavities. Stick around until the end, as she will tell us the best toothpaste that will give you perfect teeth in just 90 days. Do you need dental cleaning? But do you need a cleaning? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Do you think it stops you from getting cavities? How does that happen? What's the science? Well, if your dentist or your hygienist tells you, yes, you do need a cleaning because you have that crusty stuff that they call tartar, calculus, plaque in places around your mouth, then you do need to do something about that. The, the hygienist could clean it off your teeth, but believe me, it's going to come back. Not everyone needs a dental cleaning and just getting your teeth cleaned doesn't always stop cavities. If your dentist or hygienist tells you that you have tartar or plaques, then yes, you should do something about it. However, Dr. Ellie believes that while the hygienist can remove the buildup during a cleaning, it will come back if you don't take care of your teeth at home. Healthy Biofilm But there is a very thin film that is supposed to be covering your entire mouth. And that film is biofilm. It's made of bacteria wrapped in a protein and it forms this mesh that is protective. And this mesh, when it's healthy, resists the formation of plaque and resists the formation of tartar. A healthy biofilm is a layer of good bacteria that form an external protective covering over your teeth. The bacteria in the biofilm are wrapped in a protective mesh structure keeping your teeth strong and healthy. So we want to develop healthy biofilm. That's the first thing that you want to do if you have plaque, tartar, or calculus. Dr. Ellie emphasizes that rather than just focusing on getting rid of plaques or tartar deposits during your tooth cleanings, the goal should be to create an environment in your mouth that naturally resists their formation. How does plaque form? Plaque is a bacterial infection. In your saliva, in the liquid in your mouth, are lots and lots of kinds of bacteria. And most of them are really good and helpful. One particular kind of this bacteria is called Streptococcus mutans. What they do is travel around the mouth because the only place strep mutans can multiply is on the hard surface of a tooth, a non-shedding hard surface. They love teeth. Plaque starts as a bacterial buildup in your mouth. Dr. Ellie explains that your mouth naturally contains many types of bacteria. Among the many bacteria in your mouth, Streptococcus mutans is particularly significant in the formation of plaque. This type of bacteria is known for its role in dental decay. And strep mutans consumes sugars. So if you have sugars in your saliva from the foods and drinks you eat or drink, Strep mutans will take those sugars and use it as an energy source to multiply and also to make sticky pads that glue strep mutans to your tooth and to other strep mutans. And when they grow so thick, they can actually be seen. That is when you have plaque on your teeth. This buildup of streptococcus mutans becomes visible as plaque a soft, sticky film that covers your teeth. If plaque isn't removed through regular brushing, it can harden into tartar and lead to further dental issues like cavities and gum disease. How to remove plaques easily. Dr. Ellie suggests a simple yet effective method to help manage and reduce plaque buildup. If you consume a tiny amount of xylitol, this sugar from birch trees, one or two mints like a Zelly's mint at the end of every meal, after every snack, after every drink, Try to eat and drink in sessions, and then don't eat or drink for an hour or two afterwards. Xylitol is a natural sweetener that doesn't contribute to plaque formation. Instead, it helps neutralize the acids in your mouth and reduces the bacteria that cause plaque. Dr. Ellie advises we try to organize our eating and drinking into sessions rather than snacking continuously throughout the day. 
This means having defined times for meals and snacks, followed by a period where you don't eat or drink anything. During that time when you're not eating and drinking, you will be forming this healthy biofilm, which is what you need. This healthy biofilm acts as a barrier to protect your teeth from harmful bacteria and plaque. By giving your mouth time to establish this protective layer, you reduce the chances of harmful bacteria accumulating. Over a period of a month, the xylitol will feed all the bacteria in your mouth, feed all the good ones. It will also feed those nasty strep mutans that are on your teeth. The thing is, strep mutans cannot use xylitol. It cannot use it for energy. And without energy, strep mutans can no longer make their sticky pads to stick to your teeth. So they become slippery. So you can wash them away when you clean your teeth at night with a mouthwash. Xylitol helps destroy streptococcus mutants over time by interfering with the bacteria's ability to produce acid, which it needs to thrive. As a result, plaque becomes less sticky and easier to remove when you clean your teeth, particularly at night. This helps maintain cleaner teeth and reduces the risk of plaque buildup. And the good bacteria, when the teeth are clean and there are plenty of good bacteria, they will take the place of the ones that you just eliminated. What is tartar? What is tartar? And in order to explain tartar, I have to explain what is plaque, because tartar is hardened up plaque. Dr. Ellie describes tartar as the hardened form of plaque that forms on your teeth. Tartar is essentially plaque that has been left on your teeth long enough to harden. Plaque is a soft, sticky film of bacteria that forms on your teeth. If plaque is not removed through regular brushing, it can calcify into a hard substance known as tartar. How to remove tartar easily? The use of Listerine. And the Listerine that I choose to send people when they purchase a kit, and the one I recommend you begin using first, is Listerine Cool Mint. To manage and remove tartar, doctor. Ellie recommends using Listerine. Listerine is a popular mouthwash that promotes oral hygiene by decreasing plaque, fighting bacteria, and freshening breath. It contains antiseptics such as menthol, thymol, which combat dangerous bacteria in the mouth. But if you are trying to get rid of stubborn, subjugable, that means under the gum, tartar or calculus, or even over the gum, tartar or calculus, you may want to switch out the Cool Mint for the original. For some reason, and I have my own theories on why this might be, but I don't know for sure, but the original Listerine is able to loosen and get rid of the subgingival and super gingival, the above the gum dental plaque, and listen to me carefully here, when it is used as part of my complete mouth care system. By reducing the bacterial load, Listerine can help prevent the formation of new plaque and assist in loosening existing tartar, making it easier to manage during regular dental cleanings. How does cavities form? You see, a cavity begins, only can begin in a tooth that's lost its strength. It's lost enamel minerals. Tooth enamel is kind of like a skeleton, a structure, like a honeycomb packed with minerals in between all of the spaces. And the problems begin when you lose those minerals from those spaces, and you lose them because they get dissolved out of your tooth enamel by any kind of acidity. It can be acidity from foods, from eating, from snacking, from all kinds of things, including the acids produced by bacteria. Tooth enamel is the hard outer layer of your teeth. It's composed mainly of minerals, especially hydroxyapatite, which gives it strength and resilience. This enamel can be destroyed by an acidic environment that erodes its minerals. The acid in your mouth can be produced by the food you eat and by streptococcus mutants. Once strep mutans has attached to your tooth, it, it gets thicker and it gets more, and this massive plaque is multiplying, and as it multiplies, the byproduct is acidity, acids. As these bacteria break down sugars, they produce acids as a byproduct. These acids also contribute to the erosion of tooth enamel. So guess where these acids go? Into your tooth to cause more demineralization. The bacteria go into that open hole, do the same thing again, cause more demineralization, goes this progressive destructive process, goes on and on. 
And the mass of these bad bacteria is what a dentist will call caries, C-A-R-I-E-S. So it is, in fact, a kind of infection. Now, if this infection continues unstopped or unchecked, eventually it will undermine the strength of your tooth, and eventually that tooth will cave in. It hasn't got structure to support it anymore, and that caving in creates what we call a cavity. Demineralization refers to the loss of minerals from the tooth, weakening its surface. As more plaque forms, more acid is produced, which makes the damage worse. Over time, the bacteria move deeper into the tooth, causing tooth decay, which can be called caries. If left untreated, this decay can lead to cavities, which are holes in the tooth caused by severe damage. How to heal cavities. Limit sugar. The first thing we have to do is actually limit sugar. This will limit plaque from forming in the first place. But that will stop the future problems. Sugar serves as a primary food source for bacteria in your mouth, particularly those that contribute to cavity formation. When you consume sugar, it fuels bacteria like Streptococcus mutans, which then produce acids that erode your tooth enamel. By reducing sugar intake, you cut off this food source, making it harder for these bacteria to thrive and cause cavities. Stop the ongoing infection. The second thing we have to do is actually stop this infection that's already started in your tooth. And the way we do this is to actually help the outside surface of the enamel heal itself. And in order to do this, we have to stop that acidic damage and we have to increase the amount of minerals that are available for the enamel to repair itself. To support enamel repair, you need to increase the availability of minerals like calcium and phosphate. These minerals are essential for the remineralization process, which helps restore the enamel's strength and integrity. You can do this by consuming foods rich in these minerals, such as dairy products, leafy greens, and nuts. You can speed this process of mineralization for sure. And the way you do that is using the right kind of fluoridated toothpaste and mouth rinses. And I am very, very specific about the only kind of fluoride I recommend, which is sodium fluoride. And the rinses that I recommend are a 0.05, very, very dilute very, very insignificant. And you may hear dentists wanting to prescribe for you some kind of really strong fluoride. I highly recommend trying the more dilute first because it appears to be far more effective. Dr. Ellie advises using fluoride toothpaste and mouth rinses to enhance the remineralization process. She specifically recommends sodium fluoride, which is effective in repairing enamel damage. For mouth rinses, she suggests a very diluted solution of 0.05% fluoride. This is a very mild concentration of fluoride in mouth rinse, making it safe for regular use while still helping to repair early enamel damage. When you use it two or three times a day, don't use it more, but twice a day should work really well if you think you have a very dry mouth or you want to use it three times a day. Brush with the fluoride toothpaste twice a day, once in the morning and once before bed. However, excessive use should be avoided as it may not offer additional benefits and could potentially lead to other issues. The key to effectiveness is consistency. Um, but what happens, what the fluoride is actually doing, is it's speeding this remineralization process. We can speed a year, which is what it normally takes, to three months simply by rinsing twice a day with a dilute 0.05 sodium fluoride mouth rinse. Regular use of these fluoride products helps speed up the remineralization process, allowing your enamel to recover and become more resistant to future acid attacks. By integrating these products into your daily oral care routine, you support your teeth's natural healing processes and maintain better overall dental health. Which of Dr. Ellie oral health advice will you be following? Let us know in the comments.